Hello and welcome to Money in the Movies, Second Reel. I'm Peter Billigus. On this show, we go a bit more in depth about a topic discussed in a Money in the Movies episode. Today, I'm gonna talk about my review of Casino Royale and the topic of short selling. In the episode, we mentioned that the villain in the film, Le Chiffre, uses a very high risk investment strategy called short selling or shorting. When an investor shorts a stock, he or she is hoping that the stock price will go down. Rather than the traditional buy low and sell high, short selling is the reverse. You sell high and then buy low. Now, a bit of clarification here. What we are talking about are stocks. When someone short sells a piece of real estate, well, that means that they sell it for less than what they owe on it. So if you owned a home with a $200,000 loan and you sell your home for $185,000, well, that is a real estate short sale. In the stock market, short selling is different. As I said, shorting is a way to make money when a stock goes down. But how exactly does that work? I mean, if you owned a stock and the price goes down, you would lose money, not make money, right? Well, with short selling, you typically don't own the stock, you borrow it from another investor. Imagine shares of Apple are trading for $100 per share. I wish. Anyway, you think that the stock price is going to go down. Now, you don't own any Apple stock, so you borrow it from someone who does. You would call your stockbroker and say, dude, assuming your stockbroker is a dude, I want to short 100 shares of Apple stock. Your stockbroker would then call all of his clients and say, does anybody want to lend 100 shares of Apple stock to you? Now, why would somebody want to lend their shares to you? Well, the same reason that people want to lend anything. You can charge a fee for it. I might say, hey, I'll lend my Apple stock. The stockbroker would then move my Apple shares into your account. Every month that my shares are in your account, you would pay me that rental fee. So now 100 shares valued at $100 per share are in your account. You would then sell those shares high, leaving you with $10,000 in cash. But remember, those 100 shares that you sold weren't yours. You borrowed them from me. So you owe me 100 shares. Your strategy is then to wait until the price of Apple drops. And suppose in two months that it does. Suppose the price of Apple stock dropped to $50 per share. You would then buy 100 shares at $50 per share or $5,000. Remember, you sold high and then bought low. When you buy those shares, you would then return those 100 shares to me, the guy you borrowed them from. Your profit is the $5,000 you made from selling at $10,000 and then buying back at $5,000. And of course, you did pay me a small rental fee for the two months where you borrowed my shares. The problem with short selling is the same problem with every other investment. What if you are wrong? Suppose you sell 100 shares of Apple at $100 per share, and then the next week the price goes up to $120 per share, and then $150 per share. Well, if you bought them back then, you would lose $5,000. And remember, every month that you are watching that stock, you are paying me that rental fee. Keep in mind, a stock's price can only go to zero, but there is no limit as to how high a stock's price can go. Short selling then is one of the few investments that carries unlimited risk. So my advice for most people is to stay away. I'm Peter Billigus, and thanks for watching Money in the Movies, Second Reel. 